Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we're going to talk about the new DC slate of movies and TV shows that James Gunn has announced, along with Peter Safran through the trades and on their YouTube video. So we're going to dive into that. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the presentation itself and a little bit about, you know, the projects themselves, because we don't really know much about the projects. But before I get into all that, I do want to thank Warner Brothers Home Entertainment for sending me a copy of Legion of Superheroes, which is their next animated film. It's coming out on February 7th on digital and a physical copy. So be sure to go pick yours up on that day. And if you want to come back to this channel, if you're subscribed, I will have a non-spoiler review go up on February 7th about this movie. So you can hear my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comment section of that video for sure. Uh, so let's dive into this, this news with James Gunn. And this is not a sponsored or paid episode. And you're going to find that out very quickly because I'm going to be very negative here. Uh, but James Gunn gave a very cheap presentation, in my opinion. I'm going to be very mean about this. Uh... The DC characters I love more than Marvel characters. I know you can't tell by looking at my background. I only have one Green Lantern uh, thing over there. It's signed by the cast. But I have a lot of DC stuff. I'm a big DC fan. And uh, these characters I love more than anything. Green Lantern being my absolute favorite superhero of all time. And for me, this announcement was so poorly done. Because none of it was earned. Um, you know, Marvel, when they first started their shared universe, they did Iron Man. It was a massive success. Hulk came out soon after. They peppered in some Iron Man stuff to it. They rushed an Iron Man 2 film, got Captain America and Thor out, and then led to Avengers. And after that, Disney bought them, and then they went into the full planning of what Marvel needs to be. In the beginning, they had a kind of an idea and a slight roadmap, but it wasn't super, super detailed. It got that way, you know, in Phase 2. And that's where James Gunn came into Marvel. He came in during Phase 2. He wasn't there during the time when they were rolling the dice and hoping for the best and hoping it would help them build a cinematic universe. He wasn't there for that. He was there when they already started planning stuff. So him coming over to DC and going, we're going to plan everything. That's he, that's why he has that perspective. And it's a perspective I disagree with. He's I think he's planning a little too much. Um, he's not leaving a lot of wiggle room for potential changes. And if something like Superman doesn't do well, I doubt something like Booster Gold is going to get funding to come out. So it's... it's I hope they work some really interesting magic here uh, because, you know, James Gunn has had some successes in the Marvel Universe, but in DC, he's had stuff that I've liked. I liked Suicide Squad more than the previous one, and I liked Pe Peacemaker, but those are different interpretations of those characters, just like he did with Guardians. Those are nothing like the original uh, comic book characters, but it worked for the masses, uh, you know, Guardians did. So, I but I just don't, I don't want to see him completely reinvent Superman and some of these other characters some of them work the way they are and uh, and so you can do that with characters like Peacemaker and, and Star-Lord you can completely change who they are and make them unique for movies and do whatever you want with them because no one's that in love with those characters like there's not enough people to gather and, and throw stones at you but for Superman there is so uh, him writing Superman makes me very nervous and this presentation felt very cheap and it's not off to a good start because like I said Marvel can come out now that they've had phase one through three, Iron Man to Endgame, they've won a lot of goodwill from people. And even if they're losing some of it with phase four, it doesn't matter. They earned it all at one point to where they can go out on stage, show a bunch of title cards, and get everyone excited and have everyone lose their minds um, with no casting announcements or anything. Warner Brothers has not earned that. They've announced far more things that got canned or you know destroyed or you know not released. They've had way more projects like that than stuff that actually has come out. And the stuff that has come out, not a lot of it has made them a lot of money you know i think uh their only billion dollar movie maybe was uh aquaman i don't know if wonder woman got that high but it did get up there but they and other movies got close to a billion but and i know some people are like oh the billion number doesn't really matter it does when you want to take that profit and fund it into other movies it absolutely does matter so warner brothers and dc have not earned the goodwill to come out make a cheap youtube video where there's not even title cards and you're just showing comic book artwork of the project you're talking about so you don't even have anything planned for these you just this is like okay this is our ideas we have a true crime detective a true detective story for a green lantern or whatever but we have no showrunner we, we're talking to people but that's our plan and we're just going to announce that you know and that'll make everyone lose their mind and it, it, i'm a green lantern fan and i have not lost my mind <laughs> i'm not going to jump and cheer for you making a video that's on par with my videos where it's you with lights and a blurry background and a couple comic book images popping up that's my level of content creating and coming from Warner Brothers, DC, and James Gunn, uh, I, that's cheap. It's very cheap. It looks very cheap. And uh, the presentation was not enough to get me excited, at least. It, it might work on other people who have YouTube channels where they react to stuff and they want to lose their minds for their audience. But 
It's not for me, <laughs> not not at all. So he started off by, you know, beyond the cheap presentation, he uh, James Gunn said that there was Shazam 2 coming out and Flash, which is going to be official reboot of everything. Shazam has existed or has been disconnected enough to where they could probably fold him into the new series, the new movies, as long as it's, um, imagine if it's a success. Flash is going to be a reboot and it's going to restart everything, just like Flashpoint did in the comic books, and we'll talk about that in a second. Then Blue Beetle's coming out, introducing a new superhero for most a lot of people, and then Aquaman 2. And those could potentially be in the new universe, kind of, too. They could be folded in. Um, so that's that's where we stand with the stuff coming out. And then we have the Joker movie, or Joker, uh, and Joker 2 coming out, and then the Batman, and the Batman sequel, and all the TV shows tying into it, uh, Superman and Lois, and uh, Teen Titans Go, I think he mentioned. All of those are now considered Elseworlds, so, uh, which is fine for comic book fans, but I feel like the masses, that's not good for. And it's not because I think the masses are dumb and they won't understand the difference. No, they will understand the difference, but they're going to pick one. So you're either going to have a situation where people go, oh, I like the Robert Pattinson and I like the Penguin show and I, now I want to see the sequel of the movie. I'm invested in this universe. I don't want to see Batman hang out with Robin. Or you have the opposite where people go, oh, I do want to watch Batman and Robin and or Brave and the Bold and I love it. And so now I don't want to watch anything else with Robert Pattinson in it because this one's better. You're going to have that happen and it's going to split your audience and your fan base. And I think that's absolutely bad for business. And that's why I'm not a fan of, of this. I think what James is hoping for is that he does, he's hoping he creates a better Batman and it's going to make people not want the Matt Reeves stuff because maybe they try to negotiate with Matt Reeves and he wouldn't join the DC universe. And so they were probably like, fine, then we're going to make our own Batman and you can do your thing. And we're just going to, we're going to get people that we're going to outvote you at some point. And maybe that's a, a, a nefarious plan. I wouldn't put it past Warner Brothers. They've certainly done scummy stuff like that in the past with creators. So, so yeah, so that's all now Elseworld stuff. So now on to the, the actual stuff announced. We have five TV shows and five movies that were announced. The five TV shows are Creature Commandos, Waller, Lanterns, Paradise Lost, and Booster Gold. Now, I am not excited about Creature Commandos. Neat characters, but it's going to be a very niche audience, and I just don't see them getting a lot of views on that show and getting a lot of people watching it as a way to connect them to this new shared universe. That's something you release in a phase two or something or a phase three when you earn and build that, you know, goodwill with your fan base and they start trusting you. I'm not, I'm not trusting this just because James Gunn is involved because he, yes, he's done great with Guardians of the Galaxy and I liked Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, but those are complete reinterpretations of those characters. So Creature Commandos, he's going to completely reinterpret and he'll probably make it fun for sure. But then he's going to go do Superman. And I don't want a completely reinterpreted Superman. I want a Superman that's that's more of the spirit of Superman. Kind of how Marvel did the spirit of Iron Man and did the spirit of Captain America. Like, that's what I want with that with characters that are iconic. I want the spirit of them on screen. The spirit of Spider-Man. The spirit of these guys. The spirit of Batman. And that's what Matt Reeves did with his Batman movie. So I want, it doesn't have to be a direct translation of any specific comic. It just needs to feel like an extension of that character. And I just don't think James Gunn is... He hasn't shown me so far that he's capable of doing that. He's only shown me that he's capable of completely reinterpreting characters. So I don't have a lot of goodwill going into this. Even as a DC fan, I'm just like... I'm not super excited. So Waller, I haven't really liked Viola Davis's take on the character um, or her, inter her appearances in anything so far. But Jeremy Carver is attached to the show, as are some of the people that worked on Watchmen. And I love Doom Patrol and Watchmen. That's what Jeremy Carver worked on was Doom Patrol. So I like those. So it's, it's turned my eye to this, that it maybe could be good. But I have to see more. I mean, we didn't even get title cards here. Like I said, like, there's nothing. Like, this was the cheapest presentation ever. So until we get, like, more information, I'm not going to be excited about any of these projects. I'm going to be more concerned than anything because this was a very poor way to announce them, in my opinion. Um lanterns not even called green lanterns it's called lanterns so that again goes back to that warner brothers thing where i feel like they're embarrassed by their characters sometimes so they don't call them by their names so green so this is just called lanterns now that could be some, because the show might have other color lanterns in it and that's fine if they're doing it for that reason uh but if it is just about two green lanterns working on a case um you know i don't know it's like then call them green lanterns like what the hell man so uh so we'll see how that turns out i do like the the premise kind of John Stewart and, and Hal Jordan, that's great that it's going to be a buddy cop thing. It's kind of what I've always wanted to see with Green Lantern. Um, but I was kind of more hoping for like a training day thing uh, where it's like, you know, Hal Jordan or John Stewart with Sinestro. And then, you know, you find out Sinestro's the bad guy. 
but maybe they'll do what the animated movie did recently with Hal Jordan and uh, and John, and uh, where one of them turns bad, and it's kind of a twist. So that could be cool, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm a big Green Lantern fan. It's my favorite superhero. So I'm uh, hopeful for this one, but I got to see more before I get excited about it. Um, because they've already, they've announced th two or three Green Lantern projects before, and none of them have happened. So again, just saying things are coming out with no real, you know, I, I, just, I don't know. It just, I'm not excited about any of this stuff. Paradise Lost is their version of Game of Thrones. It's Themyscira, women running around in battle, you know, and all this uh, intrigue and mystery and probably a bunch of backstabbing and stuff. So we'll see how that works out. Um, I'm interested on some level because I like the characters of Themyscira, but again, I, I got to see more. I got to see who's going to be cast in it. I got to know more. Uh, Booster Gold, same thing. I love the character. I think it's great that they're doing a project with them, but I got to see more before I get excited at all for it. Uh, same with Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing's a character I love. James Mangold might direct it. I guess there's a, a rumor or thing going around saying he's in talks. That's cool if that's true. If he directs it, I will certainly be more interested in watching it. But it comes down to who's going to play the character, what it's going to be like. Um, so, again, we're, we're, all we heard was that these things are coming out. So there's nothing for me to do a backflip over or lose my mind over like some YouTubers are. Like, I'm not going to get that excited over someone talking like I'm talking to you and showing a picture and saying, this is coming out. Get excited. It's like, you haven't earned that goodwill, Warner Brothers in DC. And even if James Gunn is your mouthpiece, you haven't earned it. So, so to me, I'm not excited. Like, I'm not going to jump over the moon for these. Uh, Supergirl, World of Tomorrow. It's going to be a project where Supergirl is uh, living on a chunk of Krypton and then watched everyone around her die. And then she eventually goes on to other planets and starts doing some good. It's basically the story from the movie True Grit. If you've never seen that, you should check it out. Um, Tom King is the king of ripping off other people's ideas and stories and turning them into his version of what he thinks are his own stories. Um, but I, I, I'm not a big fan of Tom King's writing. So the, the fact that they're going to do this take on Supergirl doesn't get me super jazzed or excited um, at all. And it also comes down to casting as well. So we'll see how that works. I do like the, the contrast, though, of a Supergirl who's a little more jaded and a Superman that's very hopeful. Like, that's good contrast when those characters meet. Uh, but beyond that, I'm not, I'm not excited for the, the take on the character. Um, the authority is also something I don't care about. Now, the good thing about it is if James Gunn writes it, he'll completely reinterpret the characters and then he'll probably make them easy accessible for the masses. Um, and there is some cool characters on the team uh, that you can tell neat stories with. Uh, but again, that seems like one of those ideas where it's like New 52. Flashpoint rebooted the New 52 uh, comic book universe. And when New 52 came out, they were like, we got Superman books and Batman books, although he's still in the old continuity kind of, and Green Lantern books, but he's still in the old continuity kind of, kind of how Shazam and Aquaman will be. Um, but but also we have, you know, Voodoo and Resurrection Man and, and Grifter and all these other characters, uh, you know, some Wildstorm characters. That's what this feels like. It feels like this is the new 52. We got your Superman and Supergirl and Batman and Lantern book, but we also got your Creature Commandos and your, you know, your Frankenstein Agent of Shade. You got your Swamp Thing, you know, you got your... Uh, you know, authority. And, and so for that, I'm just like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not excited. And I'm, I probably, I, you could get me to write this movie and I probably still wouldn't watch it. That's how much I care about the authority. Um, and then you got, uh, Brave and the Bold, which is going to be their Batman story where he's teaming up with Damian Wayne, his son. And so they're skipping Dick Grayson. They're skipping Red Hood, Tim Drake, Barbara Gordon. They're going right to Damian. Now that doesn't mean those other characters don't exist in this world. They're just not going to be the focal point. The focal point is Batman and his son. That certainly separates it from Matt Reeves' universe, so I understand why they did it for that reason. But to me, like, what else would have separated it from Matt Reeves' universe is just doing a Batman and Robin story with Dick Grayson. I've always said your first Batman movie should have Robin in it. I, I, that's how I feel. Um, that would separate it from every other take on Batman we've gotten so far is by starting off with the relationship with Batman and Robin where you don't tell Bruce's origin so much but you tell Dick's origin and because it mirrors Bruce where his parents were killed in front of him, it mirrors Bruce's story. And then you have Bruce has a chance here to create a path for this young man and a future for him um, and, and give him a life that like that Alfred kind of gave Bruce and kind of a legacy story. I, I could see that happening, but, uh, but to do it with Damien, I don't agree with. And to jump to that point just feels like, the classic, all these things feel like classic Warner Brothers mistakes where they jump to a story without earning it. 
They jump to a position without earning it. They do a presentation like this uh, on YouTube without earning it, uh, we, you know, without the goodwill of the fans and stuff. So to me, I'm, I'm hesitant about this Batman movie. It's certainly going to be a contrast to Matt Reeves' Batman. I'm sure it'll be probably more colorful. They'll, if it's the Damian Wayne story, there'll probably be man bats in it. And you know me, I want a Batman. The one thing I don't like about the Matt Reeves universe is it feels like it's a universe where you can't have a giant clay face monster or a man bat monster. It feels too grounded in reality. And I don't like that. I like a Batman that could have those the chance at those characters. So certainly this is going to be that. So I like it for that reason. Um, but again... I won't know until they cast it, till I see trailers, till I see more about it. Um, just hearing the title, I can't get too excited. Uh, but I am already don't like the Damien idea. Even though I love the character, it just feels, again, like they're trying to get to a point without earning it. And and I don't like that. And then lastly, we have Superman Legacy, which is officially the start. It's the official start of this new universe, um, but it's not... Uh, it's written by James Gunn and possibly directed because Peter Safran saying he's trying to get James Gunn to direct it. And I feel like a lot of those are being made for budgetary reasons and because they need to get financing for these projects. And James Gunn has a pretty decent track record. He can go into a room and say, hey, I made Guardians of the Galaxy. This is how much money I made. He can pitch himself. He can present himself and say, and now I'm ahead of DC Studios. Forget the old guys. I can make you money. He's going to do a big, you know, selling pitch and he's going to push himself and try to get financing for a lot of these projects so it'll probably behoove him to direct superman as well but i personally don't think he's the right fit for superman he made a superman type movie i think i don't know if he directed it but he was involved in it where it was like a kid with superpowers and he was like evil and he was an alien and he killed everybody and stuff and it was like a dark take on superman that seems like james gunn's speed he's like a cynical you know kind of guy who um who i don't know if he could write I don't know. We'll see. I mean, he put a little hope and and good-hearted stuff in Guardians, um, so I, I know he's capable of it. And I know he's a talented guy, but I don't know. I, I, on some level, I just I go back and forth with James Gunn. You know, like uh, he he sometimes proves himself to me, and sometimes he doesn't. And and so because I'm fifty fifty on him a lot of times, I'm I'm not. Uh, I don't get too excited when he is given a project like this and he's in charge of Superman. Like. I don't know, time will tell. But so for right now, with just saying these titles, I'm not super pumped. I'm more, I have more to say about the presentation that James gave on YouTube than anything. I just felt like it was a piss poor presentation. And I see some YouTubers out there, they were losing their minds. They were watching it going like, oh my God, yeah. And I'm just like, man, have a little bit of like, uh, tone it down a little bit on some level. Like I get that you're a fan or that you're playing it up for your audience and stuff, but but still, like, really look at this. Like, look at the presentation we got. A guy on camera with a blurry background, a couple lights on him, and he talks, and a comic book image pops up. That's literally what I do. That is not what we should be getting from a Warner Brothers DC presentation. It should have been way more, uh, you know, planned out and thought out than that. Uh, that just seems so cheap and quickly put together to try to beat scoopers to, you know, leaking the information. And to me, I would have been like, dude, do the press release. And then like spend, a, and that way all the information's out there and then spend a couple days making that video and doing graphics and doing cool stuff and giving us a proper cool thing. It just seems so half-assed and if they're going to put that little effort into something to announce their universe, I can't imagine what we can expect moving forward. So I hope we get a lot better. We can only go up from here, I feel, but, but we could also get just more of the same and I'm worried about that. So for me, not super excited about these announcements right now. I need to see more. I need to know who's involved with these projects because just saying Booster Gold's being made, we've heard that before from D DC. Just saying Green Lantern TV show's being made, even with names attached to it, and they never happened. It's like, so to me, this is nothing new. It, James Gunn is just repeating stuff. I've heard that, you know, Walter Hamada say at times. I've heard uh, Jim Lee and Dan DiDio say at times. He's just, a, he's parroting the stuff I've already heard and I hear a lot of promises, but not a lot of goodwill to make me feel like these promises will be fulfilled. So if you have a different opinion, if you're more optimistic and everything, I would love to hear that down below. I never like to shoot down optimism. If you're out there and you're super excited about these projects, let me know. I just, the only time I shoot down optimism is when it's those people that get super energetic over these announcements. I'm like, dude, why? It's, it's, he's just saying things like, you know, and he's, maybe he's committed and you, you trust James Gunn and maybe that's why you're excited and that I can understand for sure. But 
just hearing like a Booster Gold show is coming out and a Lantern show and a Paradise Lost show and a Supergirl movie based on Tom King's run. It's like just hearing that, like, you know, we need more, you know, go, you know, build your opinion off more information than just that. Um, but if you want, but if this is enough information to get you hopeful, that's fine. And if that's the case, let me know, let my cynical ass know down below and we can keep talking about it down there. But for me, I'm not, this isn't a pass for me. I love DC more than Marvel. So I want this to succeed, but I need to know more and see more because right now this just looks like the new 52 in movie and TV form. And that didn't work out well for DC. And so I, I don't know if it'll work out well for the movies and TV. So time will tell. So let me know what you think down below. Like I said, and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future, hopefully with a more positive look on my face. I'll have my next DC video will be more positive. We'll talk about this movie and you'll see that review go up and you'll see that I'm not a complete hater. So, uh, so yeah, that'll be coming soon. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.